This lesson we're going to be creating several input fields and then creating the event listeners for the input fields, so including the focus out and the focus. So whenever the input field gets focus, it goes red. Whenever the focus out, it goes white. We're also going to be tracking any changes to the input fields and writing the result into the console. Also tracking the key presses, so key down and key up on each individual element, and then tracking the key type as well as the event type into the console. We've got an input field within the HTML. We're going to be selecting that and adding event listeners to the input field. So going over to the JavaScript code, selecting the input field, I'm going to give it a variable name of my input, and then using the document query selector, selecting the input field. So we just have the one input field. I'm going to select it by the tag of input and adding in event listeners to this. We can also add event handlers, so such as if we want uh, on focus, we can set the event handler to on focus. So that's going to fire off every time the focus is applied to that input field. And within the console log, we'll just type in focused within there. And so going into the HTML, whenever we apply focus to that field, we're going to see that the focus is being applied. Let's also go through and we're going to add a bunch of additional input fields onto the page. So selecting the elements, and this is going to be our main container element. So using the query selector, select the element with a class of output and loop through. So creating a loop where we're going to set the value of i to zero and looping through while i is less than the value of five increment it by one and this is where we can create a bunch of different elements using the document create element and the elements that we're creating are going to be input fields and then as we loop through we're going to add each one of those into the output element so using the output element and then append the element to the page so that gives us a whole bunch of output element fields that we can then use and we can apply the different elements and event listeners to those. So we're going to be using the event listener to add to this. So selecting the element and then add event listener. And the event that we're listening for is on focus. And whenever we focus, we're going to select the element and select that element, apply the style and color. And we use actually the background color for the element. So updating the background color and we'll set it to be red. So whenever it's in focus, it'll go red. And we also need to capture the focus out. So we can add in another event listener, and this time it's gonna be capturing the focus out. So whenever we go out of focus on the element, we'll set the background and we'll set it back to the original default, which was white. So now whenever we're selecting the page elements, the input fields, we're going to red when the focus is applied. When the focus out is, then we're going back to the black color. We can also listen for changes on the elements. So listening for an on change and adding it as an event handler. So that would be as the on change. And again, depending on which one you use, you can use either one for the event listener or the event handler. They're both going to work the same way. I'll just do one example of the event handler. So it's going to be listening for on change. So whenever the page element, the input element changes, then we can output the text from the element. So we'll just output the value of that particular element that's been selected. So once we focus and if we type in content, it's changed. Once we remove the focus, that's when the on change will get fired and get invoke the content that's associated with it. We can also track the key events on the element. So in this case, we are listening. We can listen for a key down and a key up event on the element and pass that into a function. So adding the event listener on the element and listening for a key down event. And I'll just run a function called adder and also we'll run another one that's going to track the key up. And we'll track the keys that were actually pressed within the adder function. So create the function. And this is kind of like a tracking adder function. So we can track within the console the 
event type that triggered the event. So we get the key down, key up. So whenever we go on any one of the input fields, when we press the key down, and as soon as we release it, that's where the key up fires. If we hold the key down, that's going to result in multiple key down presses. And that will result in, that's where we've got the multiple key downs that were sent into the console there, where we see the key down being run number of times. We can get the event from the event. We can get information about the key. So let's select the event and we'll open this up a little bit bigger and select within the input fields that we get all of these keys on the key down and key up. So there's a number of different ways to determine what key was pressed. So the keys each have different codes, which is the code within the event object that triggered it. So we've got the code key E. We also have the key value. So that was the E key that was pressed. There's also a key code. So each key on the keyboard has a specific code associated with it. There's the type. And there's also contained within which, this is going to also indicate which key was actually pressed. So as mentioned, there are a number of ways to select the key. And typically, you could use something like the event key, which would actually track just the key value that was pressed. If we press something like enter, we get the enter key. If we use the arrows, we get the arrow down, left, up, and right. So we can track that information, put it within the console as each one of those events occur. Here are some of the commonly used input field event listeners that you can add to your input fields.